I watched the movie up to that part. I've seen the movie so many times on HBO. I just watched it up to that uh-huh. part in the beginning. And when you said it, it was coming from Dice. You said it so naturally. And it was the story of Dice. You said, when, you, when Lady Gaga goes in the back, you tell your friends, you go, you know, I knew a thousand guys that were better than fucking Sinatra. I could out sing them under the fucking table. But with Sinatra, when he went on stage with those blue eyes and that fucking shark skin suit and those leather shoes, he became Sinatra. That's right. And all those other guys just went to the wayside. Yeah, it just went nowhere. And that's what you did in your life. Yeah. When you hit the stage, there's no fucking pad. <laughs> there's no... No pad. There's no nothing. drama. There's no fruit and, in the green room. But yeah, I, I just love to perform like Dice does and, and that fucking. was actually written in the script i did that right no none no of, none of that i know that but when that you was said stuff it, written that i did but not that when you said it it was just i was like that's that's a line that only he could say and only he could understand because like if a regular actor had to say that line he would not understand what he'd be saying yeah because it's you know it's organic i you know it's just organic and it you know, I've gone through uh, 40. How long are you doing comedy now? 28. Yeah, I'm doing it 41. 41. You know, like, you know, it's like when I think of like even the arena days, let's say, that's like a different lifetime ago. You know, like when, when I get on Instagram, why, why don't you have the black in your hair? I got, because I don't want to be that. You know, I hardly wear the leathers anymore. I like going on in a t shirt and my jeans, you know. You know, because I've seen, you know, I, you know, I, I got a little angry with Sebastian for a while because uh, forget about Dice influenced. He was doing Dice on stage in specials. And and I love the guy. He opened for me years ago. And I, you know, I would only have people open for me that I saw potential in, you know. And even back then, I'd say it's too dicey. And then through the years, he got dicier. But then he came back to himself, you know, and. Originally, what got me mad at him was when he was on Mark Marin talking, and Mark Marin was asking him about opening for me and, you know, asking him to tell some stories, which we have a lot of, about hanging with me. And he wouldn't tell any stories. He wouldn't tell anything. And I'm like, you know, what the fuck is this? You know, I took you under my wing. So it got me, it started getting me angry, and then comics would get me angrier going he's like dice light when he's up there you know with the leather jacket and but before he did the garden which he did four nights which is unbelievable you know i do love the guy so when he went on the howard stern show and and stern questioned him about me he answered stern the the right way so i wrote a whole thing on instagram about how great the guy is and and to him like i'm with you you know like i i wouldn't want him to think like, I, I wasn't behind him. Because there have been other comics now. Like, Bill Burr has talked to me about the influence I was in his life. And how he saw me at, um, oh, fuck, at Boston. Not the Boston Garden. I think the Boston Centrum. And Bill's one of the funniest. You know that. And he, uh, you know, he plays drums. And when I was doing the arenas, I would end with a giant drum solo. I would play it to a... I had like an eight piece band. So I would do the Elvis thing. I would do the Travolta thing, doing Grease Lightning. Uh, I would even do some songs on my, I would do Love Won't Let Me Wait by Luther Vandross, you know, just with a keyboard player. And then I would do Soul Sacrifice with the band from Santana. And I'd go into a big drum solo. So Bill, (laughs) I saw him, he was filming Bill Burr Presents, which Eleanor did a spot on for, Comedy Central. So I went to the taping and I'm going, I want you to play the drums on stage. He goes, no, I won't do it because that's what you did. And I go, but I also did arenas and you're doing that, you know, so play the drums if you want to play the drums. I said, I'll come up with you one night. We'll do a double drum solo, you know, but I I love the influence I brought in. I, you know, when I was doing the arenas, I didn't think that, Others were ever going to do it. Like, you know, you got to be a certain kind of performer to be able to entertain 20,000 people. I geared myself for that my whole life. You know, I didn't study comics. I studied Elvis. That's who I studied. Elvis, Buddy Rich, like the greatest of the greats. 
So when I made it, I knew how to perform, you know, and but but other comics have come along. Jo- Rogan, he's doing arenas, you know. You're doing big theaters, Chappelle. you know. Chappelle's doing it, but. I love, you know, you know, Kevin Hart has spoken about me in detail about what I did for him. You know, like, you know, when I'm 30 years old, I'm not thinking about a guy that's, you know, you know, two years old or 10 years old going, I want to be that. But that's who I was watching Elvis do the 68 comeback special when I was 12, you know, going, oh, I could be that. But and I didn't mean as a singer, just the whole image of that person. And that's what I became in stand-up. And now, because so many comics are wearing leather jackets on stage, I'm going, fuck that. I'll find something else. You know, because I've always set a trend. I don't I don't follow. You know, I can't have every other comic wearing a motorcycle jacket on stage and be going up with the motorcycle jacket. So I went to the T-shirts, and I'll cut them out. You know, I cut them a certain way. And, you know, and trust me, it's a it's a lot easier because some of my leathers weighed like twenty pounds. Jesus, how so, many all together you got? A couple hundred. You know, I have still, all the still. Yeah, I have them all. I you know now and then I'll give a leather away, like one if I like somebody, I'll give them like leathers that I wore in concert, but not like the Dice Rules or the Dice Man Cometh or the MTV Jack. I have all of that stuff. Yeah, you don't get that's for my sons. You know. You don't give that stuff away. You know, it's funny how Richard Pryor introduced me to comedy. Dangerfield made me thought about doing comedy, and you pushed me over the edge. You pushed me over That's the edge. That's a cool thing. Like, you pushed me over the edge. It's like I knew once I saw you, you let me know I could do it. You would let me know while you were shooting. You could do this. That's, you know. Would you like to buy a flower for the lady? Yeah, so I could plant it in your ass. <laughs> All that stuff was what I was thinking. So at first I was pissed at you for like the first week. This motherfucker stole my shit. <laughs> you don't even know me, and he stole my shit right out of my fucking head. Well, it's street. It's, it's street, street humor. It was so, it was so relatable to me. And then I, I, I mean, I showed everybody who would listen. It was that type of campaign. Like anybody who would listen. My my in laws were from Buffalo, Catholic. I remember having my father-in-law in the room with the door locked. Fucking out. <laughs> fucking out. <laughs> what the fuck are you giggling about? Nobody- <laughs> Why did you like him? What did he do? He did an error. I knew a second ago, but no. <laughs> keep, just keep going went from where you told it. Then- okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know that little forehead you got? 